Hey Cedar Hill, welcome to another online service and it is Christmas Day. And we would love to just wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous and blessed 2021. Yes, an absolutely phenomenal year ahead for us. We just thank you, Father, that you're going to be with us through this year, that you're going to fill us with courage, fill us with strength, fill us with power, fill us with might. Through your Holy Spirit, we can take on 2021. Absolutely. So guys, have an absolutely fantastic, restful, peaceful day with your family today. And let's enjoy the worship. Straight after worship, Pastor Wes is going to share a message with us. Have a great day, guys.
Hey, a very Merry Christmas to every one of you Cedar Hill family and friends. It's so wonderful to be celebrating Christmas together, even though it's 2020. But from Corrine, myself and our family, a very Merry Christmas to you all. And we trust that you've had a wonderful start to this Christmas morning. Uh, we're going to jump into God's Word today, but before we do so, I'm going to pray. So won't you join me as we pray this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your presence Lord, I am so amazed by this one thing, that your presence is never earned, it's promised. You promised to be with your people. Your, your heart longed to be with us. And that's what Christmas is about. It's about you setting the, the, or pressing the reset button. It's about you breaking into this world to be with your children, Emmanuel, God with us, so that you could restore every broken thing to the original intent that you had in your heart from the beginning. And so, Father, today as we celebrate Christmas, would you make us so mindful of Jesus? And more than just being mindful of Jesus, would you pour out a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of our understanding would be open, that today and all through this coming new year, Father God, we'd be so gripped with the wonder and the splendid, splendidness and the beauty of Jesus, our King and our Savior. And so, Lord, I speak your blessing of every family as we enjoy this holy day today, as we remember the birth of the Savior of the world in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a portion of scripture to you out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 1 and verse 2. And uh, but before we get there, I want to explain to you a little bit of what the world may have looked like when Jesus was born. Well, for the Jewish world, the Jews at that time were under a very cruel and extreme occupation by the Roman Empire. The Jewish people had been locked down in their nation, so to speak. And what theologians tell us is that at this point, for more than 400 years, the Jewish people had not heard God speak. God had gone silent. He had said all that he needed to say through the prophets and through the patriarchs of old. And if we have a look at some of the things that God had said, he constantly spoke into the, into the Jewish nation the promise of a Messiah, the promise of a coming king who would rule and reign over them with peace, with justice, with joy. And so the Jewish people, more so than probably at any time in their history, longed for, looked for, and waited in expectation for Jesus, for the Messiah. They were longing to hear God speak again. And what was so amazing was that from this point, you and I in hindsight, we can look back, but from this point, God wasn't going to choose to use uh, prophets or patriarchs to speak to the Jewish nation anymore. No, he was going to do something spectacular, something glorious, something so wonderful. The hope of Christmas. He was going to send his son. I want to read to you what it says here in the book of Hebrews, and then we'll jump back uh, to an Old Testament prophecy. But it says here in Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. I want to say to you as we begin this morning, God had grown silent for over 400 years, but it was almost like God was inhaling. He took in a deep breath to breathe out Christ into the earth. Remember the, 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 the nativity story starts for us with an angel presenting himself to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the angel came to Mary and said, Mary, you're going to be with child. You're going to have a child and you're going you're gonna to have this, this amazing, amazing savior of the world. You're going to call him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sin. And she says, well, how's this going to be? I'm a virgin. I, I, how's this going to happen? And the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. It was that moment that God breathed into Mary, the Christ, the Messiah. And he would no longer be silent. All that God wanted to speak, he would speak in his son to you and I. 
Now in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, it says this. We, it says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. This is the hope of Christmas. This is the wonder and the joy of Christmas was that God gave a child to you and I. He poured out his son. His son was given into the earth. And the Bible goes on to say in Isaiah 9 verse 6, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so we celebrate on this day the birth of that child, the hope of Christmas, a son given for you and I. I'm sure you know the scripture, but in the Bible, in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, God wasn't silent for those 400 years because he was angry or he, he didn't care about us or he'd forgotten about the world. No, he, he was silent because he was preparing to birth his son so that he could speak loudly, boldly and clearly of his intention to love, to redeem and to restore all uh, that was broken. The world needed a savior and God gave us his son, Jesus such a wonderful time of the year as we remember the wonder of Christ and all that he is. You know, I want to remind you today that Christmas is not about the gifts under a tree, but rather it's about the gift on a tree. <laughs> you see, Jesus was born so that he might be the savior of the world. The Bible tells us in Matthew 1 21, when, when, when the angel is speaking to, to Mary and, and, and the angel says, and she shall bring forth a son. Or the Bible's commentating on this moment, pardon me. And it says, and he shall bring forth, she shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sin. See, this is the reality. Jesus was born into a broken world that needed to be fixed, to be restored. It was filled with chaos and, and, and rebellion and evil and wickedness and all kinds of hatred. But Jesus came into this world to save us. You know, for thousands and thousands of years, man has been putting his trust and his hope in all things, all kinds of things that will only let him down. You know, family, if, if we put our trust in anything else other than Jesus Christ, we will stumble and fall. You know, you cannot put your hope in money. You cannot put your hope in a government. You cannot put your hope um, in, in your education, the circumstances around you, because all of these things change. We may have a wonderful government that does well, but every couple of years, we've got to vote a new one in. And somewhere down the line, there's bound to be a government and there's bound to be a group of people that are not going to do what they were supposed to. So where do we put our trust? Where do we put our hope? We put it in Christmas. We put it in Jesus. So remember, Christmas is not about the gifts under the tree. And we love those. Our children love those. But it really is about a gift on a tree. Jesus Christ, who would save his people from their sin. Christmas isn't about presents. <laughs> it's about a person. And that person is Jesus. And we get to celebrate Jesus today. We get to be mindful of him and all that he has done for us. All that he has given. I was reading a commentary and this person spoke about how that Jesus was born into a, into a manger, into a wooden manger. He was born into this earth so that he would, in a wooden manger, so that then he would uh, be, be hung on a wooden cross. But Jesus came into the earth, into that manger, so that you and I could be seated in heaven. Jesus came to redeem us. This is the story of Christmas. The story of Christmas is that we were dead in our sin, just like the Jewish people of that day when Jesus was born. They were under the, the cruel occupation of the Roman Empire and Jesus came to set them free. I want to remind you, friend, he didn't come to set them free in a way that they thought. They were expecting a military leader, somebody who was powerful and would raise up an army and get rid of the Romans. But Jesus was dealing with something far deeper. He was dealing with the sin and the rebellion of our own hearts. The joy of Christmas is that God has broken into our world, into our lives with his only begotten son to redeem and to restore everything that has been broken and destroyed. I want to say to you, family, you may look around and still see things that are broken and, and, and haven't been restored. You may be stuck in a situation that's difficult and hard to navigate. But I want to tell you this. God will not fail you. He's moving you forward onwards. 
And he's restoring and healing and reviving and making new. That's his promise. In fact, the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible says, Behold, he makes all things new. This is the hope of Christmas. This is the glory of Christmas. This is the wonder of Christmas. Is that God in Christ Jesus is restoring and healing and making new. It's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. And it's so amazing. I want to close this morning um, just by reading a portion of scripture out of the book of Luke. And again, these portions of scripture are familiar to us. And sometimes we can gloss over them. We can read over them very quickly. Um, But I want to read to you a portion of scripture found in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to read from verse 4. What's taken place before this is essentially there's been a census called uh, in Israel. And everybody's got to go back to their own hometown and, um, and be counted in the census. And the Bible says to us here in Luke chapter 2 and verse, verse 4, it says, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. I want to pause there for a moment. There's something so profound about this place called Bethlehem, where Jesus will be born. In the Hebrew language, the word Bethlehem means house of bread. And it's such an amazing thing because from this house of bread, this place, this this town called the bakery, God would give to the world the bread of life. The bread of life would come from Bethlehem. God is so detailed, so perfect. Even in this moment, God's speaking the truth to you and I. You know, today, many of us are going to sit down and enjoy um, a Christmas meal. It may be a humble one. It may be a diet one. I don't know where you are, but we're going to eat together as family. I want to encourage you that though we fill these physical bellies and they give us strength in this physical body so that we can keep on doing the things that we do, unless you eat the bread of life, you will never know the joy of the Father. You will never, ever know the joy of eternity or His healing touch or His restoring hand. It comes because we sit down to eat of the Christ the bread of life. So today, as you sit with your family, won't you be mindful of that meal? Won't you share that bread with one another? Won't you encourage one another with the story of Christmas, the hope of Christmas, that Jesus really is all that we've ever wanted and desired and imagined. He's beautiful and amazing. It says in verse 5, they went to the city of Bethlehem to be registered. He went with, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. As I was reading through all the different portions in the Gospels um, about the nativity, the birth of Christ, this Last line really struck me because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, this is the only portion of scripture that tells uh, this story. And it's so amazing to me because there's all kinds of things. You know, we've seen the nativity stories where there's the mean innkeeper who kind of shoes them away. Or, you know, eventually they find somebody who's willing to give them a stable and all those kinds of things. But really what the Bible is saying is that there was just no room. There was a census going on. The town was full and there was no space for Jesus. There was no room in the inn. There was no place for him to be born. And it made me think, hey, Wes, how much space have you made in your life for Jesus? Is there room for him in all that you do? You know, sometimes as we walk with Jesus, we give him a little bit of our lives. A little corner of the house, so to speak. Hey, Jesus, he, you've knocked on my door. I've let you in, but I'm going to put you up in the attic. <laughs> or I'm going to put you in that back room or that outside room. I just want to leave you there. Please don't ruffle my feathers. Please don't mess with my life too much. <laughs> Have you made room for him? Have you given him access to every part of your life? You see, Jesus was born that day in that place so that you and I could be born again in heaven. Jesus was born on earth so that we could be born again in heaven. But that comes because we 
open up our lives and make room for him. We call him in. I'm thinking about the new year that lies ahead of us, 2021. What could make 2021 everything that we want it to be? If we make room for him. If we open up all of our lives, every place and invite him in to do what he said he'd come to do, to restore and to renew, to make whole. So let's trust Jesus this year. The hope of Christmas is that God didn't leave us dead in our sin, but that he gave us a child. <laughs> he sent his son. And his son is not just anybody, his son is God. And he is wonderful, he is counselor, he is mighty God, everlasting father. He's the Prince of Peace. I want to remind you as I close that Christmas is not about the gifts under the tree. It's about the gift on the tree. It's about the person of Jesus. And my call to you this Christmas is to make room for him. To eat the bread of life and to enjoy all that the Father has for you. Christmas really is a time of joy and remembering the wonderful gift that is ours in Christ Jesus. Family, thank you for being with us this morning. I pray that you be encouraged. I pray that you spend the rest of the day enjoying yourself around a good meal. But don't forget to eat the bread of life. Don't forget to encourage one another, to pray for one another. The last thing I want to say, because it just jumped into my mind. I'm just so excited about Christmas and Jesus. He's coming back. Jesus was born into this earth. And he was raised to life and seated at the right hand of the Father, but he's coming back. Let us be encouraged, not only with the hope of a Savior who was born and redeemed us from our sin, but the hope of a Savior who's returning to make all things new. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray with you and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace that has come to us in your Son, Jesus. Thank you for the hope of Christmas. Thank you for the gift of your son. I pray, Father, I really do. I pray this morning that you would pour on us such a revelation of Jesus. That we'd make room for him in all of our lives. Every part of our lives would be surrendered to him. And we'll be yielded fully to your son. So that your will, your plan, and your purposes could be done through us in a way that brings glory to you. Father, we bless you. And we thank you for the hope of Christmas. Amen. Amen. Awesome, family. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Bless you.